In this video, we're going to look at the problems that you might face with STRLEN in PHP and look at some alternatives like MBSTRLEN. But first of all, let's talk about why there's a problem or a potential problem with STRLEN. Now, you've probably used STRLEN before or string length to actually, you know, count the amount of characters in a string. So as the name suggests, you'd think that it counts the amount of characters in a string. Now, this is sort of correct. However, in reality, it actually works completely different to this. So we'll be taking a look at some examples and how this actually works. Now, it actually counts the amount of bytes in a string. So it's not anything, you know, that's been hidden away from you or it's nothing secretive. It is actually explained in the PHP manual as a note, but it's pretty hard to miss. So if you're wondering what we're talking about here, let's take a look at an example using a single character. So let's go ahead and create a variable here called string. And we'll just go ahead and type A for the uh, thing. So we're going to assign A or a lowercase a character to this variable. So let's go ahead and echo out strlen of this string. Now, you'd probably go ahead and expect this to output 1, and you'd be right. So let's take a look in the browser, and this outputs 1. So you'd expect this to happen. And the same if I was to type, for example, hello, you'd expect this to output 5, which it does. So what we'll now do is go ahead and look at changing this slightly and change this to a special character. Now, uh, basically with UTF encoding, a character can be up to four bytes long. Now, if this strlen function counts bytes and not actual characters, then let's take a look at how this sort of handles it. This actually returns two. Now, you might be a little bit shocked that that's returning two. You might feel a little bit cheated and thinking, wow, I've been doing it wrong all along. But don't worry, it's probably not the end of the world. It just means that you may get slightly inconsistent results when you're outputting things. Uh, obviously, of course, unless your application relies heavily on strlen to perform correctly, which is probably doubtful. But it's a good idea uh, to go ahead and revise any way you've used this. So obviously, we know that this is a problem. However, let's look at some alternatives. Now, we've got one alternative called mbstrlen. So it works exact well, pretty much exactly the same as strlen in the fact that it, you know, is counting characters. Let's take a look at using it on its own without any options. So it's still returning two. So, you know, you might be thinking, well, what's the difference here? The difference is that we can actually specifically define the character encoding that we're using. So in this case, I can go ahead and provide UTF-8 here. And this will go ahead and actually take into account the fact that, you know, we're not counting bytes anymore. We actually want to go ahead and count actual characters. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, well, yeah, this is made up of two bytes. But in reality, this is actually a single character. So now when I go ahead and refresh, we get the expected result of 1. So we're now looking at an accurate way to count characters like this. So if I was to say, just as a, an example, type my name but with this accent character, we'll go ahead and we'll get the expected result as a 4. And again, if we sort of double this up just for the sake of it, we go ahead and get 5. So we're seeing the results that we would expect here. Now, you may be thinking, well, you know, do I really need to define all of this every single time I want to count characters? Well, no, you don't. You can use an uh, mbstrlen on its own. Instead, what you can do is set the internal encoding of your script. So you can go ahead and say mb internal encoding. And what this will let you do is do exactly what we've just done here with a second argument, but it will let us go ahead and provide it just once and then not have to bother again. So in this case, this will automatically tell us that the MB internal encoding is set to UTF-8. And if you're not sure for any reason at all, you can go ahead and you can check this by echoing out the value of this function without any arguments. Let's go ahead and get rid of this for now and go ahead and check. And you can see that it says UTF-8. So we know that that's been set to UTF-8. If we go ahead and get rid of this line, we get the default. So let's go ahead and just put that back and go ahead and get rid of this and just use the MB STLN function on its own. And there we go, we get the expected result again. So we've done this in a short, uh, sort of shorter way where we don't have to keep defining this over and over again. Now, 
There is an alternative, so we can go ahead and actually UTF decode strings before we use strlen. If you know you absolutely want to use strlen, you can go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and get this MB internal encoding, and we'll go ahead and continue to use this accented character. We'll go ahead and we'll use strlen, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and UTF-8 decode this and then go ahead and just provide the UTF-8 decoded string within the strlen function again, and you see we get one. So that's another option. Now there are other ways to do this. I think probably the most efficient way, however, would be to go ahead and create some kind of wrapper functionality uh, in your current or next application. So for example, you could provide a function or a method as part of a class to just contain all of this functionality. So basically then you don't have to keep using MB STRLEN or UTF-8 decode or any other method that you can use that's available to go ahead and count characters properly. So the wrapper functionality is a good way to go, but in terms of just demonstrating this, we've seen how strlen is not reliable for counting character length, and you should go ahead and use one of the alternatives we've spoken about.